Hey, hey, party people. It's Evie. Now, I've been asking a handful of times, what on earth is a bubble trap? How do you do it? Could you explain some of the tricks? So, without further ado, it's been a video that I've been putting off. Let's splash on into that. Now, a bubble trap, it's a whole lot of fun. It involves some waiting, and sometimes the waiting, people are just not up to it, and some patience, but you're almost always going to get a kill. And there's a certain satisfaction when you kill somebody just about 70 kilometers off of a structure, a wormhole, whatever. Even more so when that response fleet comes in and they realize they gotta burn 70 kilometers to try to save their buddy or they gotta warp off and come back. I've had a handful of times where people undock, see what's going on, and dock up. They just gave up. And there really is nothing that can compare to that. Now, I did mention earlier that it takes a little bit of waiting, a little bit of patience. Not a lot of people are too keen on waiting a long period of time to get what could very well be a minuscule kill. I don't ping for bubble traps often. Um, usually I will when it's somebody that like, now I know this guy is coming back and I know it's going to be big, but usually I don't. Usually it's a couple haulers. Usually it's one dude who's going to get surprised and you can beat him through the surprise and panic of what's going on. Now, there are some things to keep in mind when doing a bubble trap. There are four things. One of these things is incredibly obvious, but I'm going to go over every single thing. And then at the end of the video, I'm just going to go over some tips that I have learned and can make this a whole lot easier. Now, the first thing to keep in mind, and it really is the most obvious question, what's dropping the bubble? There's three ways to do it. I have a preferred way to do it. Some people prefer other ways to do it, but there are three, and I'll go over it. The first, and I don't recommend this, but hey, when you're solo, it's what you got. It's an anchorable bubble. An anchorable bubble, I mean, it's going to take time to anchor. You're going to be dropping it on a wormhole, off a wormhole, or off a structure. Anybody who undocks is going to see it and let everybody know, hey, don't warp here. It works. When you're solo, it's all you got. I get it. Not my preferred way of doing it. And it's probably widely agreed it's not worth doing. The second is a hick. I don't use I don't use a hick. It's not my thing. Some people prefer it. I go for it. It's just not my jam. They are tankier. The the scram that they have is a hundred points. So these haulers and things that you will occasionally get doing this. You can now infinite scram them, so that's nice. You don't have to worry about them MJDing off or activating a um, whatever the thing is. Man, I'm blanking on that module, man. The thing that makes it harder to scram you. That's what we'll go with. You all know what I'm talking about. D don't use them. Anyway, the third is a Dictor, and a Dictor is my preferred way of doing it. I usually use a Heretic or a Saber. Um, Eris is a lot of fun if you really want to just go max DPS, but I use a heretic because it's got 20k EHP, it's beautiful. Anyway, let's talk about the mechanics of why Addictor is so nice. It's mobile. That's it. Obviously the bubble's not mobile, it's going to drop a bubble wherever it drops a bubble. But the Dictor's not, not static, it can move around, you can bounce it to perches, you can move it to decloak, you can just hit it with the scram, bounce to a perch, warp it back down, all that fun. Dictor really is fun. And while it's bouncing to a perch, the bubble still remains. So that's the huge advantage over a hick, is you can now drop bubbles in multiple locations and either catch the target and delay a fleet, or catch the target and then set up to catch more things. It's a lot of fun. I, for instance, will go over something in the, the tips section about things being in line. And that's going to bring us to the second tip, or the, the second requirement to a stop bubble. Things have to be in line. And I, I can't say this enough, it does need to be actually in line. You can't just warp to something, call it close, and then, hey, that's it. I mean, it might work on, I don't know, like 80% of the time, but it, it's got to be basically in line. Ways to do it. Warp from point A to point B. That works. It's 
that's what everyone should do. But hey, if you don't want to get decloaked by warping to point A at zero, there is a way around it. You can go from point B back to point A, back to point B. It's going to pretty much guarantee that you're in line. But that's super simple. Just a requirement. It's got to be in line. The third thing is the bubble must be placed before they initiate warp. Now, I did briefly touch on this with the anchorable bubbles and why those aren't the best thing. It does need to be before the initiation of warp. And I know I'm repeating that a lot because there's a distinction of being in warp and initiating warp. Being in warp, your ship's in the warp tunnel, it's going bye-bye. It's going really, really fast. Initiating warp, that's clicking the icon on the screen and just saying the warp drive active. They don't need to be in warp. They don't need to be moving quickly or anything. They don't need to be leaving point A. It needs to be before they click the button to warp. Best thing to do is the very second you see a splash, you drop the bubble. That's really it. The very second you see them undock, you drop the bubble. You don't give them any time to hit that warp button. The game is a little bit old. There's some, there's some nice things about the game being old. It's that when people undock or jump a wormhole, their descan cycles faster than they've loaded grid. <laughs> so, they would have already entered the system, right? You see the splash animation, and then the descan goes off. They're still in black screen. They can't click anything yet, but you've hit the bubble, and descan hasn't refreshed yet. On their end, they see, hey, there's no bubble. <laughs> Obviously, good players will hit the descan again. So it is what it is, but uh, a whole lot of people don't tend to react to that. I don't know why. They just go, oh, my structure must be safe, and they do it anyway. I can't tell you how many times haulers will have the nullifier just for it to do nothing to save them because they don't activate it. I don't know why. I really don't. Anyway, the fourth and final thing, a bubble must be within 500 kilometers of the destination. Now, I'm sure there's somebody who's going to, to get me in the comments, so I might as well address it now. I don't know if it will work at 500 kilometers. The bubble radius is 20 kilometers. All that fun. So, I guess technically. I don't know if it'll work from anywhere between 480 to 500 kilometers. I just don't know. I don't push my luck. For me, 70 kilometers is pretty good. If it's an active fort... I know that 450 kilometers is pretty good because they're going to land at 470. So I, just, I have no need to push it. I really don't. If you want to test it, let me know in the, the comments below because I have no idea. I would assume it wouldn't work. I would assume it's just like people using an instant dog and they'll go right through. There's also a risk about having it be 500 kilometers off the destination. Um because of instant docks, right? If somebody's warping to your inst to their instant dock and you've set it up 500 away, well, they've added an additional 30, 40, 50 kilometers on their distance. You're not in range anymore. There, there are some reasons why you don't want to push the bubble range. But hey, if it works, it works. I just don't know. I have no reason to do it. But uh, that, that covers up all the mechanics of this. Um... Yeah, that's it. And there's just four requirements. You gotta figure out what's dropping the bubble. You gotta figure out uh, your point A and point B. You've gotta drop it before they initiate warp. And it's gotta be within 500 kilometers of it. Now I did say I wanted to go over some tips and tricks that I've learned over the time. The biggest one here. Um, something that I would absolutely recommend everybody do. And you'll learn it pretty quick once you start doing it. Or at least appreciate how important this is. When your dictor is sitting at point B, cloaked, and it drops that bubble, start aligning to point A. If something lands at the bubble, it's going to land at the edge. It's going to be in that line. Think of it just as one big ray with multiple points. They're going to land 20 kilometers away from your dictor in a straight line that you can just align to. That way, when they land at the edge of the bubble and they hit cloak, your dictor decloaks them. To follow it up, the second your dictor hits the edge of the bubble after aligning back to point A, it drops another bubble. That way the target lands between two bubbles. 
Also, if you let your, your kill ship, the thing that's sitting and watching the wormhole, if you let that wait until the second bubble's dropped, you now land 20 kilometers off the target. So now you just don't get scrammed and then dunked by whatever you're trying to kill. This came in handy when we went to go kill a Brutix, and I dropped the second bubble and warped Eevee there. Now I'm not in scram range. I don't have to brawl with the Brutix. Easy peasy. Highly recommend it. Always do that. Um, I guess one more thing to do with that, if somebody does cloak and your Dictor by some chance doesn't manage to decloak them, assign drones to your Dictor. Pretty easy. Makes your Dictor appear a whole lot bigger than it actually is. Drones do in fact decloak. <laughs> Missiles decloak too, so if you want to shoot your Dictor, go for it. I don't recommend that though. That's just being silly. Um, something else here, a uh, super helpful tip, it's all about bookmarking. Bookmarking is going to make this very simple. Now, I happen to make three bookmarks whenever I bookmark a wormhole for this. If I know someone's going to come from the structure and they're going to go to a wormhole, it's three bookmarks. I set up a perch, attack, whatever we want to call it. I set that up on the wormhole in line. Usually, I create this as I'm landing, so it's going to be somewhere way larger than a thousand kilometers away. That's going to make this whole process significantly faster. I warp to the perch, and then I warp to the wormhole at 70. I create a bookmark at 70 in line called bubble here, structure to wormhole. I then warp back to the perch. I then warp to that bubble here bookmark at 100 kilometers and save that as warp here at 100. Now, when my dictor comes from the wormhole, it'll splash in, warp to the at 100 bookmark at 100, and land at the bubble here bookmark at zero. My dictor no longer needs to burn to a bookmark, and it no longer needs to warp off and back. It's just less time on D-Scan, so you can get this trap moving quickly. One of the last tips here, it's going to make your life infinitely easier. It's going to give you peace of mind when you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting what will feel like an eternity at some times. There is an in-game chat channel. I'll link it in the description. It's called Locators R Us. Locators R Us, it's a collective of pilots who all trained up through, all, all grinded essentially, through various missions and stuff, the ability to run locator agents. Essentially what you do, you join this channel, you say, I need a locate. Somebody will reach out to you. The price is fixed. I think it's like five or 10 mil. I, I usually always tip because it's so cheap and I just want, I just want to know where they are. Anyway, someone will reach out to you after you say that you need a locate. You give them a character name, they run a locator on it, it usually takes about five minutes, and they tell you where they are. They'll let you know if they're in Gita. They'll let you know wherever, if they've logged off, if they're in a wormhole, if they're, if you know the route, if they're on their way to or on their way back. Now there is a five minute delay, so keep that in mind. If you, if you run a locator agent and it says they're in Gita, well, you don't know if they've left yet, but you know they were there. So you can kind of gauge ballpark What's going on? All right, they're still in Jita. Run it again in another five minutes. Run it again in another ten minutes. Try to figure out what's going on with them. If they're no longer in Jita by the time you run that second locator agent, hey, that's a good chance they're coming. They're on their way back, and they're going to be there a lot quicker than you think because of that five minute delay. It's just nice to use. Locators R Us has helped me track down countless targets over over I guess years now that I've been doing this. But uh, that's about it for all the tips here. I can't think of anything else. No, I did. I wrote down some things and I'm, I'm looking over it. I'm like, yeah, no, that about covers it. Um, I guess some people would be concerned like how successful it is. I mean, I catch targets all the time doing it. I catch more than just haulers. I'll catch people in uh, cloaking ships like uh, strategic cruisers. I'll catch scanners. I don't care what I catch as long as I catch it and it dies. But that's about it. I mean, I can't think of anything else. Hopefully I have empowered you with information so that you can have an opportunity to excel. That's about all. Take care. Have fun. Go get something.